in order for you to realistically create wealth increasing your income is a big part of that equation hi thank you so much for tuning in i am so excited that you're here my name is akini and i I'm a high net worth financial advisor. Welcome to my channel. This channel is focused on helping you start to think about ways of increasing your income, start to think about ways of generating wealth, preserving this aid wealth, all while living the great quality of life that you deserve. So in today's video, I am taking it back to the basics with the creation of a budget. So this is a good chance for you to start looking to creating your own budget if you don't have any and use this as a guide to just help you to start the process to adjust the process if you're already into the process and so on and so forth so i decided to use fifty thousand dollars as a good average your income could be higher or lower but i just feel like fifty thousand dollars is a good ballpark for a lot of people so your income is fifty thousand dollars the very first thing we do is to break that down into the pay periods that we have so for instance at my job we have 26 pay periods but some jobs especially the ones that pay on the 15th and 30th of every month have about 24 pay periods so what we do is we break that down we take the fifty thousand dollars if you see me look down it's because I took the liberty of breaking everything all down. If you can see here, I have so many numbers scribbled here, but I will um, translate that into an Excel. That way it's easier for everyone to see. So I took the $50,000 and I divided that by 24 pay periods to get the pre-tax amount for each pay period. So that came down to $2,000. So at the very beginning, we're going to handle the pre-tax deductions. So that's taxes. So all of your income taxes, federal, state, local taxes. And then we're also going to take out the 401k. So with regards to taxes, the easier thing to do is to just go back to your pay stubs and look at how much has been deducted and kind of get an average get like a percentage so add all of those tax numbers and divide those by your monthly income to get you know the percentage of how much on average is taken out from a tax standpoint and then the next deduction is the 401k which is very very important if you're not contributing into your 401k you definitely should consider doing this especially if your company is matching up to a certain percent so let's say your company says they're matching up to seven percent of your contribution you could give more than seven percent but your least contribution should be seven percent because that is what the company is willing to match anything less than that you are leaving money on the table so here when i did the math so seven percent of two thousand and eighty three dollars is 145 dollars you could definitely contribute more into your 401k especially if your income is higher the maximum contribution for 2021 is nineteen thousand five hundred dollars so you could give up to nineteen thousand five hundred dollars pre-tax money and that is a good thing because you know that just means that the money the pool of money that grows over time is larger than if you just give whatever the minimum that your company matches is so i think contributing money into your 401k is suddenly a discipline that all of us really need to implement because it's money that you forget you even have but it will come in handy once you qualify to take money from this specific account so now we are done with all the pre-tax deductions so what we're left with is $1,353.95 the main post tax deductions after tax deductions that I usually see is just um, you know all of your medical stuff your main health insurance cover your dental your eye and then also other like types of insurance uh, like life insurance disability insurance and so on and so forth those are usually almost negligible close to a dollar or two dollars or something like that 
we are going to learn why it's important to have a budget from this uh, particular exercise. So what you take home every pay period after all of those deductions is $1,303.93. And now you can multiply that by two so that you can use that lump sum number to be the main number that you use to pay all of the bills that we're going to talk about here. So the take home pay for the month here is $2,607.86. Personally, the very first thing that I do once I get my money into my bank account is to pay God. Take 10% of my earnings and give in form of tithe. So I usually round it off. So in this case, instead of you know saying $260, I just say $265. So that's what I will give every single month unless my pay increases and I can adjust it accordingly. Then the very next thing is saving. So this saving is going to be informed by several things. It's going to be informed by what goals you actually have. Note that this is like the second thing before you pay any of your bills. The reason as to why it is important to do it this way is so that saving does not become an afterthought because there could be so many expenses that come into the picture. You could literally find different things to buy if you wanted to. But putting this at the very top helps you to ensure that, okay, this is taken care of, then whatever else is left over can be money that you can use towards other things that you'd really like to to take care of. So depending on what your savings goal is, in this case, the goal is to save $1,000 in an emergency fund. So three months, $1,000 divided by three, so roughly $350. So that means every month I take $350 and put it into a high yield savings account and forget about it. Because once I do that, then that helps me to get to that number. What your savings goals are, are going to dictate how much you take out of your paycheck. And you can even start with a lower number. And then as you take out different expenses, you can come back and evaluate and say, okay, I did say 350, but I can actually do 500. Or I did say 350, but based on all these different expenses, I can only do 250. The next one is paying debt. So if you have student loan debt, if you have credit card debt or whatever debt you have, that would be the next expense to take care of. So in this case, I did plug in $200. And so what I did is I did either debt payment or sending money home. Some people might actually have both where you have to pay debt and then you also have to send money home. So just use this as a guide in case you have both. But I just said, you know, it could be either or. So in this case, let's say it's debt payment, $200. Then rent, I plugged in $750. Your rent could be higher or lower. That's just what I thought would be an average number. Then if you have a car note, I did plug in here $300. Insurance for the car, I plugged in 80, could be higher or less. Electricity, I plugged in 60. Uh, for some people in the winter time, it's higher. Cable and internet, I plugged in $120. And then food, which includes gas, I plugged in $200. It could be higher or lower. Mine's actually higher. Then I did include $80 for a phone bill. Okay, so the total here is $2,405. Remember our take home pay was $2,607.86. That means we're left with $202.86. So at this point, you have money that you can use towards self-care. So let's say your self-care cost is $100 to get your nails done, to get some type of hair work done, costs you probably $100. I feel like for a lot of people it's going to be more, but we are working with a budget of $50,000. 
So let's say it's $100. That leaves you with $102.86. So at this point, you could decide to do different things. You could decide to take this $102.86 and put it into your savings account to grow your savings account. You could decide to put it in a specific fund. For instance, if you'd like to travel, you could decide every month you put $100 into your travel fund and by the end of the year you have $1,200 that you can use towards a trip, two trips, three trips, depending on you know where you want to go. You could literally use it for anything. I really like this layout and this exercise because it just helps us lay bare what we have. You know, if we have $50,000 and if I'm forgetting a specific expense here, you can plug in. But it tells you, you know, you, you clearly see from $50,000, we break it down all the way to whatever is left over, in this case, $102. So the point here also is to review this aggressively from time to time, preferably every month, and just look at some of these expenses and see, are there areas that I can actually reduce? For instance, you know, your car note, what's your interest rate? How much are you paying in interest? Can you refinance that? You know, look into what your credit score is. If your credit score is not good, work on improving that then go back to the dealer or whoever is financing your car and refinance because that might reduce this drastically you might be so surprised i actually know of someone who's paying less than a percent in interest on the car that they have which i think is pretty neat and then same thing with insurance um you know cable and internet do you really really need cable Maybe you just need internet and that might reduce that price by even half. You might end up just paying $60, you know, and that frees up $60 right there that you could add to your savings. You could, you know, use it to do different things. And then your food bill. Personally, that is one of my highest expenses. So I do not like to, you know, reduce that a lot, but it just depends with you same thing with your phone bill you can call different companies and you know see what offers they have you can call your company and see what kind of discounts they have for instance i know verizon has if you do like an auto pay they take five dollars off so that could be something to explore so in my opinion tithe and savings should be the top two priorities within your expenses I have been able to see so many blessings as a result of giving back the 10 percent to god so back to savings what we see here is if we save 350 dollars over a period of 12 months we end up having about four thousand two hundred dollars in our high yield savings account so let's say we take a thousand dollars out of that to put aside in our emergency fund then we're left with three thousand two hundred dollars so at this point then you could be asking yourself okay what really are my goals why exactly am i saving this money am i saving this money to in the future buy a home so you know have x amount of money for a down payment why exactly am i putting this money away so let's say you want to purchase a $200,000 home. You might need about $30,000 down. I'm not really a mortgage person, but I'm thinking, you know, you're putting 10% down and then maybe like closing costs is $10,000. That's just really a rough estimate. So you will need around $30,000, yeah? In year one, just by saving from your account, you already have $3,200. So if we take the $3,200 from the $30,000 that we need, we still need to come up with $26,800. Now, depending on how soon you'd like to have this money, that could inform how you go about it. So if you say, you know what, I want to have this money within 12 months. All we have here was the $3,200. So we need to figure out a way to come up with the extra $26,800.
So if I divide this by 12 months, that means every month you need to be able to save roughly $2,233. And so how can you do that? The very first thing you can do is to get a side hustle that helps you to come up with some of this money or all of this money or even more. And if side hustles are not really your thing, you could get a second job. The reason as to why you're being aggressive this way is because you do have a goal that you'd like to achieve or accomplish within a specific period of time. So I will create a worksheet in the near future that I'll link down in the description below of this video. And this worksheet will basically just have all of the basic budget items. So your income and your expense numbers and then it will have like a net worth area where you get to see what your net worth is because I just don't believe in, you know, just having those basics of income and expense and not really having a holistic picture of where you're really trying to go. I think knowing what your net worth is really just helps you to understand, okay, here is where I am and here is where I'm trying to go. There's more at play here, you know, your lifestyle, your dreams, your desires, your goals. Do you want to be philanthropic? Do you want to buy a second home? Do you want to travel? All those different things really inform how much money you should be putting away at this time. The other thing that I thought about was, you know, with regards to the rent, you could look into house hacking. So instead of paying rent to someone, you could buy a home using that 30K that we had. You could buy this 200,000 multi-family home where you live in one unit and then someone else rents the other unit and whatever rent they pay covers the mortgage so guess what this 750 is an amount that you no longer have to pay or you're probably paying way less than that so let's say we take 500 dollars out of that so that's 500 dollars that you can put towards your savings account or you can put towards coming up with another down payment to buy a second home. Do you see how wealth is generated or wealth is created? It's not a difficult process, but it takes you being intentional and really knowing what you're doing and what you're working with for the numbers to start to make sense. I really don't want to bore you with all these numbers, but these are conversations that I think we really need to have in order for us to understand where we're trying to go. If you love a good life, and you're also focused on a good financial future, just relying on this 50K is not going to suffice. It's not going to be enough. You know, if you want to travel, if you want to buy nice clothes, nice shoes and all that, live in a good neighborhood, and then also focus on creating a good financial future for yourself, putting away enough money into your 401K, you know, putting away money into other different investment vehicles, 50K is not going to cut it, you know, unfortunately. And for a lot of people, this income works because they live below their means, they're very frugal. But if you want to have both a good life and a healthy financial future, you're going to have to look into ways of increasing your income. I'm actually going to do another video where I talk about ways to increase your income. I think that would be a really nice video because in as much as we are cutting and seeing ways of cutting expenses here, in order for you to realistically create wealth, increasing your income is a big part of that equation. So what other numbers did I not factor here? Are there any big expenses that I did not factor here that, that are probably things that you personally have as expenses? I'd really like to read about those in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!